The talent on the Georgia Bulldogs football roster for 2024 is unreal. And that mean machine in red and black that's headed down the track is picking up steam as the dogs added yet another five-star prospect, this one to the class of 2025. The number one player at his position, a certain linebacker from here in the state of Georgia. But that's a discussion for another day. What we're going to talk about today on this edition of the How About That Dogs cast is, yes, we all know that Georgia should have a very talented roster. Over the last five recruiting cycles, I believe the average for Georgia's recruiting class finish when all the dust has settled over the last five seasons has been something like a 2.2 overall year after year. And when you're stacking High school recruiting classes like that, one on top of the other, of course you're going to be talented. That is not all there is to it, though. You also have to have development. You have to have personal growth by the young men. You have to have good coaching, good scheme. Then you have to go do it on the field. All those things come together to make Georgia a winner. So when you look at what we know, which is that Georgia has a talented roster, and we know that they have been successful on the field over the last uh, four or five seasons in particular. Well, the thing that follows on the heels of all of that is when we get around to preview magazine season, which is where we are right now. We're in June. The preview magazines will start hitting the shelves in July. I just got a notification in the inbox today telling me about discounts I can receive on this year's edition. I don't know about you. I'm so old school as a Gen Xer. I prefer that analog version. I still like to have the magazine. I like to feel it in my fingers. I miss newspapers for that very reason. But enough about me being an old guy. The thing about preview magazine season is that everybody has a list. Everybody has a list about everything. But one of the things that you're going to start to see are the preseason award lists, the watch lists for all of the various awards that are awarded at the end of the year, just after what used to be the conference championship game weekend. I guess it still is. We'll see in the new 12-team format exactly how that shakes out. But when I'm talking about like the Heisman Trophy, the Jim Thorpe Award, the Lombardi, the Maxwell, and in particular... What I wanted to do was take a look at the various awards that are presented uh, by the National uh, Football. We can take a look at it right here. The National College Football Awards Association. Their preseason watch list calendar is laid out before you here, and we're going to come right back to that. But the thing about preview season is that everybody has a list of awards that Uh, They want to hand out. But because there are so many, I'm just going to limit it to the ones that we're talking about tonight. And even in limiting it, I'm not going to touch on all of them. There are going to be a few that aren't going to get the same sort of treatment on this show, not because they're any less important or valuable to the individuals that win them, but simply because it's hard to fit all of the awards in. But I did want to touch on the ones that I have always held in the highest esteem for various reasons and the ones that most college football fans across the country are going to be at least vaguely familiar with. So if we're moving right along, I I think we've made the point already that the thing about the University of Georgia is that they are talented and it's not just one position they, they aren't just good at wide receiver or they aren't just good along the lines of scrimmage. The Georgia Bulldogs of today, the Georgia Bulldogs of Kirby Smart, are a team that has talent spread across the field. In fact, there's only one program in the country that currently has more five stars on its roster than the University of Georgia. That would be the University of Alabama. Georgia checks in with a total of 12 five-star players according to the various ranking sites on their roster right now. I believe Alabama has 13. If I'm mistaken, that number is 15. But either way, they're right there together. And Georgia is, as I pointed out, one of only two teams that are in that rarefied air. 
So when you have talent and you're winning, well, of course, you're going to be up for various awards. And that's where we get back to the National College Football Awards Association list. So take just a second here and look at this list of dates. As I mentioned, they really don't start rolling out until after preview magazine season hits. And we're, that's usually around the middle of July. So by the time you get to the end of July, then you start to see all of these various awards come out and, and they want to promote their foundations and what they stand for. And all that's great. It's new content for a guy like me every day, something to talk about. But another reason they have to wait until the middle of July is because things like SEC media days have to happen. And when you get a bunch of journalists in the room together and we start talking about things, there are certain members of those journalists like myself who are members of the Football Writers Association of America. And what we do is there are certain awards on this list that I will be voting for along the way. And generally what I do is I make my votes public whenever possible. So whenever I'm allowed to do so, you can watch all the various social medias and, and follow my pages, YouTube here, if you're, especially if you're a member, you won't miss any of this. And you'll see my personal predictions on who I think or who I believe deserves these awards when it comes time to vote, but also my various predictions as we head into the season, finishing order and things like that. But all that's in front of us. Again, once we get past conference media days and preview magazine seasons, and everybody is really starting to get cranked up for the start of fall camp, that's when we get these watch lists from the various foundations. And as you can see, the ones I mentioned off the top, the Maxwell, the Outland, the Nagurski, Jim Thorpe Award, uh, the Walter Camp, Doak, Blitnikoff, of course, the Heisman is an ongoing sort of thing. They all make their lists known once we get closer to the season. These are just the ones that most everybody's going to know about. So if we break it down and we look at it, the thing I want to go through tonight is sort of give you a little bit of what each of these awards actually represents. Like how do they figure out who's going to be the Lombardi winner for this season or who's going to take home the Mackey Award? And believe it or not, as I was going through this and researching it, just to make sure that I was giving you guys the straight deal on it, there were a couple of things that stood out to me that I had just sort of glossed over in the past. Like I had just let somebody else finish the sentence for me and you should never do that. Uh, but I had fallen victim to that very same thing because let's face it, there are a lot of awards here and it's hard to keep them all straight when you're breaking it down. So again, in addition to these awards, a couple of the ones that I, th I want you to keep in the back of your mind are things like all conference awards and then all America consideration all of which the dogs are going to be in the running for. And we're going to move through some of the players this season that are going to have an opportunity to bring home some of this hardware for the University of Georgia. So let's, let's just start with the one that everybody knows. And that, of course, would be the Heisman Trophy. Now, you occasionally have a situation where you might have more than one player on any team that could be a Heisman Trophy finalist, you know, because that's an honor in and of itself just to be invited to New York and say what you will about the Heisman. And goodness knows I've had a lot to say about it over the recent years about the fact that they don't necessarily always get it right. And so many times there are people who are voting on this award who do not love college football the way you and I do, who do not follow it so closely. And I think that's a problem when the award that gets the most publicity is voted on by people who aren't following the game that closely. So all that aside, though, everybody knows, if you're in the college football world, what the Heisman Trophy is. And if you look at this season, Georgia's one person that could end up on the Heisman shortlist would have to be quarterback Carson Beck. Now, that's simply because of the kind of offense that Georgia runs, because of the fact that he's going to be the guy who's out there uh, making the decisions. He's going to be the face of the team this year. And actually, I'm going to have more to say about Carson probably on next week's podcast about some of the things he has to do to make sure that he's ready to carry the mantle of a Heisman candidate heading into the 2024 season. But we'll leave that for next week. Carson is the guy. Because of the offense Georgia runs, he's going to be the, the distributor of the football on offense. He's going to be the face of the team. He's going to be the one that when it has to be done, the people are going to look to 
to get it done. So if there's one guy, because there's so many receivers that are going to catch balls for Georgia, there are so many running backs that are going to share, share carries. Carson's the guy. So if the dogs get a guy to New York this year, it's going to be Carson Beck. But the Heisman is not the only trophy that Carson's going to be in consideration for. But we'll come back to that in just a second. The next one I'd like to talk just a minute about is the Jim Thorpe Award. Now, I have thought forever that Jim Thorpe might just be the greatest athlete that ever lived. Because not only was he a tremendous uh, football player, he was a wonderful track athlete. I mean, the guy could do it all. And he didn't just participate in these events. He dominated in all of these various events. If you're not familiar with Jim Thorpe, do yourself a favor, go look him up. The dude was awesome, and he was awesome at everything he did. He was just out in front in a, a leader, an innovator in some areas for all of the things that he participated in. So when I consider one of the most, pres most prestigious awards of the year is the Jim Thorpe Award, and it's based on performance on the field in college football, athletic ability, and overall character. So just in a nutshell, if we're talking about the game of football, this one's pretty straightforward. How do you play the game? Overall, are you a great athlete? And then do you play the game the right way? So the Jim Thorpe Award is another one that I really enjoy paying attention to every year. Another one that Georgia fans are probably going to be familiar with is going to be the Lombardi Award. And that's because it could go to any down lineman, any big hog molly that puts his hand in the dirt from end to to end on offense or defense could be up for the Lombardi Award. And there have been Lombardi Award winners in Georgia's past. One of the most notable, of course, would be three-time All-American David Pollock. He took home the Lombardi Award once upon a time. One of the next awards I'd like to talk about is the Maxwell Award. And this one looks funny. As I was doing prep for the show, just simply because of the way the, the trophy looks, my wife looked at me and she's like, that guy looks like a little army man. Yes, he does, Miss Beast. Yes, he does. But the Maxwell Award is so much more than just a funny looking statue. The Maxwell Award goes to the best all around college football player in the United States for any given season. And you might think, well, how is that any different than the Heisman? Well, the Heisman goes to the most outstanding college football player every season. And you're like, well, aren't those the same thing? Yes and no. Not necessarily. And that's where it comes back to who is voting on these various awards. Sometimes there's some overlap. Other times there's not as much overlap. And that's how you end up with one guy winning the Heisman and a different player winning the Maxwell Award. So I know it can be a little confusing, and that's part of the reason that I wanted to sort of walk you through it tonight. The Outland Trophy is a trophy that I consider to be one of the top trophies given out at the end of each year, simply because they keep it simple. The Outland goes to the best college football interior lineman. So that means offense or defense. If you are dominating in the trenches, clearly the best player with your hand in the dirt, then the Outland Award is probably something you're going to come up for uh, as far as consideration is concerned. And again, tonight we're really talking about the preseason watch lists when I start mentioning the dogs and which ones they might land on. But these are updated throughout the year. So as you're moving through, say, the first four weeks of the season, the first six weeks of the season, these various foundations will start to send out updates about who it is that they're considering. And it's always interesting to follow along with those updates and keep track of whether or not there are any dogs on the list. And I'll do my best to help you do that throughout the year. Another one that is just one of the most prestigious awards that are handed out every year is the Walter Camp Award. And it's also one of the ones that has the most uh, intriguing and, and maybe the longest description of what should be considered when you're going to decide who wins this award. It's determined uh, by your success on the field, leadership, public service and integrity, and then a commitment to the American heritage and Walter Camp's overall, overall philosophy. 
So there's so much more to some of these awards than just what you do on the field, which is why when you look back at something like the Lombardi Award, where it's really simple, a down lineman, offense or defense, who's the best player, you know, versus the Walter Camp Award, where you might have to take into consideration, does this person do certain things off the field as far as public service are concerned? It, it's an interesting thing. That's what makes each one of these trophies, these awards, so neat is because they get to designate for themselves what's important. Now, another one that you may or may not be familiar with, you probably are, given that uh, some Georgia Bulldogs of recent memory have been on this list time after time, is the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award. This one is awarded based on the accomplishments on the field, character of the player, your scholastic achievement, and your leadership qualities. So the, when, a, when an award has a namesake, that's one of the things that the foundations will try to do is tie it back to the things that the player it's named after really represented when they played the game. And that's why the Golden Arm Award is one of the most prestigious is because Johnny Yu who was the father of quarterback, father of the forward pass, if you will, in the NFL. Um, when his name's on it, it means a little something. And when your player, when your team has a player under consideration for that award, that actually means something as well, as does this award. And, and, and this award is the Davy O'Brien Award. Now, this one's really cool. It's very similar to the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award, but it's just a little bit more all-encompassing because what the Davy O'Brien Award looks at is your quarterback skills and your athletic ability on the field. But then it also takes into consideration the academics, the character, the reputa reputation as a team player among your peers, your leadership, as well as your sportsmanship. So it really does encompass everything that has to do with the game of football. So if you're talking about someone like Carson Beck, you might be ticking these things off as we go here. Well, it sounds like Carson might be up for the Heisman, the Maxwell, the Davy O'Brien, the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm, and you'd be absolutely right. He may very well find himself on all of these watch lists. And then depending on how he plays over the course of the season, well, then he could be working on filling up his trophy case here in 2024 if the season goes, the way the Georgia Bulldogs all hope that it's going to go. Now, everybody knows with this one, especially because of Georgia's recent success. And if you are any kind of a football fan at all, and especially a Gen X football fan that had basic cable like me growing up, and you could go back and watch the history of the NFL uh, films and watch those old game tapes and game reels, you know who number 51 is. This is the Buckus Award. Now, the Buckus Award... I really enjoy the way they lay out the qualifications for this award because essentially they say to be considered for the Buckus, you have to demonstrate five traits that Dick Buckus showed when he played the game. So if you've seen any of those, if you've seen any of those old films of Dick playing a uh, middle linebacker for the Bears back when it always seemed to be cold and raining, then you know exactly what I'm talking about because those five traits are toughness on the field, like playing through injury, on-field leadership, competitiveness, football character, which means do you play the game the right way? And then last is linebacking skills. And when linebacking skills are mentioned, we're talking about everything from, you know, do you play the game? Do you run sideline to sideline? Do you, are you a big hitter? To how is your stance? How do your fundamentals look? And Georgia has had some great success in recent years about this because they've had a couple of different players win the Buckus Award. The first in the history of the university was Roquan Smith. And then a couple of years later, we had N'Kobe Dean. And now, with all of these linebackers that keep coming into Georgia as highly rated prospects, you would be very hard-pressed to not say that the University of Georgia is linebacker you right now. I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. So the Buckus Award is an award that all dog fans should be paying attention to every season because it is certainly something that the dogs seem to be taking a lot of pride in these days.
Now, everybody should recognize this award. This is the Mackey Award, and we just had the pleasure of watching quite possibly the greatest collegiate tight end to ever play the game, Brock Bowers, win this award in back-to-back seasons. That's incredible. Bowers became the first ever back-to-back winner of the Mackey Award. And the Mackey Award is one of those things, one of the awards here where I actually learned a little something as we were doing the research for this episode. But on its face, the Mackey Award is given to the most outstanding college football tight end. And if there's any doubt about who that player was the last couple of years, well, then I don't know that you were watching college football. Everybody knows that that was Brock Bowers, and he proved it time and time again. So the Mackey Award, if for no other reason, then Georgia's recent history is one that we should be paying attention to here in 2024. Now, this next one is going to harken back to, for those of us that love the game of football and have been a fan of the game of football since, well, we knew what football was. This next one's probably going to ring a bell for you because it's it's that cool of an award, and that would be the Bronco Nagurski Award. Now, you've heard me say on this podcast time and again that I'm an old defensive guy, and when we're talking about the uh, Bronco Nagurski Award, the Butkus Award, and a couple of others that I'm about to get into here, then we are right in my sweet spot because the Nagurski Award is simply given to the best defensive player in, in the NCAA in any given college football season. That's it. That's a broad spectrum uh, when you're talking about the requirements to you know win the award. But at the same time, it also just keeps it simple. When you watch the game, who is the best defensive player you saw all season? That's all you have to know to be able to vote for the Nagurski Award. Now, I'm not saying that we all get a vote. Maybe we should, and some of these might work out a little bit differently. But it's not hard to figure out, is my point. You're not considering scholastics. You're not worried about off-the-field achievements or how much this individual is doing in their community. All those those things are very important. I personally put a high, high priority on those things. This award is simply talking about the eye test. When you watch them play, who's the best defensive player in the country? That person should take home the Bronco Nagurski Award. So moving right along, one of the other awards that's just It's just one of those that makes you be like, have a personal pride. Like if you were to win this award, you know that the people who gave you this award believe that you are a football player. And that would be the Bednarik Award, which is given to the Defensive Player of the Year. Now notice the Nagurski Award was the best defensive player in the NCAA. The Bednarik is the Defensive Player of the Year. Very similar wording, but... The same player does not win this award every time. Some years, you just have multiple great players and people prioritize different things when they watch the game. But regardless of that, it is certainly an award that deserves some attention if you're following along in award season. Now, the Bolitnikoff Award is simply put, the best wide receiver in college football. The official wording is you have to be an active collegiate football receiver. So when I read that, I looked at it again. And essentially what that means is even though when we think about the Blitnikoff, we think about the best wide receiver in the country in on any given year, there are actually so many more positions that are open to this award other than wide receiver. You can be a tight end. You can be a running back. You can be an H back. Anyone that receives the football is actually eligible for the Bolitnikoff. But because the John Mackey Award is very clearly given to the most outstanding college football player uh, that plays tight end, generally speaking, when people vote for the Bolitnikoff Award, they are going to look at wide receiver and let the tight ends have their own award with the Mackey. So speaking of having your own award, another one of those awards would be the Doak Walker Award, which is generally given to, just to put it colloquially, the top running back in college football. Straight to the point, 
Who's the best running back you watch in any given year? That's the guy that should win the Doak Walker. And there are occasions where when someone wins, say, the Maxwell Award, they will also end up taking home the Heisman. Or if someone wins um, the Doak Walker Award, if you have a running back that's having a tremendous season, then clearly that person is going to be a Heisman finalist. So there is some overlap between these awards, but I love the fact that they work out their own individual niches for these awards so that a player can be considered the best running back or the best lineman or the best tight end and be a tremendous player and get their due credit, even if they don't qualify for something like the Heisman or the Maxwell Award. So now, as I mentioned off the top, the University of Georgia has a lot of great players on their roster. And a lot of our players are going to be up for some of these awards this season. So what I want to do is kind of walk you through who we're looking at on Georgia's roster that might be taking home some hardware here in 2024. So y'all are going to have to bear with me. There are so many of these lists and various awards that I'm going to have to use my notes over here. I'm going to have to cheat a little bit and walk us through what we're talking about. So just as a general reminder, I want to put this on the screen here. And I believe everyone that I'm about to mention is going to be referenced here on the screen. So you can kind of follow along with me. But if I miss one, you know, I'll try to recap at the end and cover them all. So let's start with Carson Beck. As I said, if the dogs are going to have a Heisman candidate here in 2024, it's going to be the quarterback Carson Beck. But the Heisman is not going to be the only award that Carson's up for, or at least that I expect he's going to be on their preseason watch lists for. And the rest of those would be some of the ones I just mentioned. So we're talking uh, along with the Heisman, the Maxwell Award, the Davey O'Brien Award. Remember, the O'Brien is a quarterback award. The Johnny Unitas Golden Arm, which is also a quarterback award. And then conference teams as well as All-American teams. I think Carson could very easily find himself on the All-SEC team in the preseason as well as under consideration for an All-America team in the preseason, just based on what he did last year and what we think he's going to be able to do this year, he seems like a pretty obvious choice to make his way onto both of those lists. So heading into the season, Carson's actually going to have a lot in front of him beyond just the team goals that are out there for Georgia this year. Another name, and this one's not going to come as a surprise to anybody, would be Malachi Starks. Now, a few of the awards that Starks is probably going to end up on the watch list for are going to be the Jim Thorpe Award, the Bronco Nagurski Award, the Bednarik Award, as well as All-SEC and All-American lists. Malachi Starks is going to be a classic three-and-done player. Everybody knows it from the first time he stepped on the field against Oregon and had that huge interception. We knew he was a, a star in the making. He's only gotten better, and he is continuing to improve. So there's no reason to think that Malachi is not going to find his way onto these lists both before the season as well as at the end of the season. Michael Williams is another player that the dogs are probably going to find uh, listed among the best players in the country when it comes to these various watch lists. I think there's a good chance that Williams is going to end up on the Lombardi, the Outland, Nagurski, Bednarik Award preseason lists, as well as the All-SEC preseason list and potentially an All-American list or two along the way. Um, when you look at running back, I mentioned that if Georgia has a Heisman candidate this year, it's going to be Carson Beck, simply because of the way the dogs run their offense. But out of the running back room, if there's one guy that's going to have a chance to land on any of these lists, it's going to be Trevor Etienne simply based on what he did at Florida last year. You look at the offensive line he's going to be running behind this year at Georgia and the opportunity to play in big game after big game and really put his name out there for people to pay attention to. Trevor should certainly be on the preseason Doak Walker uh, watch list as well as all SEC lists heading into 2024. Now let's move up front. Let's move up to where the big bodies are and let's talk about some of these guys that could win some of these uh, maybe lesser known or certainly maybe not as flashy awards. Coming off last year, Tate Ratledge is the name uh, 
along the offensive line that racked up the most accolades at the end of last season. And heading into this year, I think it's absolutely uh, feasible to think that Ratledge is going to be on the preseason Lombardi Award list, Outland, as well as all SEC and all American lists. Uh, if he's healthy, there's no reason to think that Tate won't find his way onto at least those last two lists, the conference list, as well as potentially another all American season. So that would be really good for Georgia. If it does play out that way, Xavier trust, that's a name that some people, you know, when they hear you talk about it, it as how much, uh, performance, is concerned for Georgia over the last couple of years. You get mixed reviews, but the bottom line is Truss is a good player who can play multiple positions along the offensive line. So he should absolutely find himself on the preseason all SEC list and potentially also on the Lombardi and the Outland Award lists. Um, those are a little bit more of a stretch simply because he is a, a player that moves along the line. So when you think of any one position, you don't necessarily think of him. But uh, certainly the all-conference lists are a place that trusts could land again here in 2024. Nazir Stackhouse is a guy who got some recognition at the end of last year and really came on. Uh, I understand that maybe he didn't play to the level that some of us fans thought he might, but he still had a really good season. And the fact that he came back is a big deal for Georgia heading into 2024 because it gives them that veteran presence there in the middle of the defensive line. So the lists that I think Stack should show up on this year are the Lombardi, the Outland. Uh, he should also have some all SEC consideration and potentially, depending on how disruptive he can be over the course of the year, an All-American list. Ernest Green was a freshman All-American for Georgia last year at offensive tackle. Think back to this time last year. We weren't real sure who was going to be the starting tackles for the University of Georgia. Ernest Green won one of those positions, went out and became a freshman All-American, and there's no reason to think that Ernest is not going to find himself on the preseason watch lists for both all-conference teams here in the Southeastern Conference as well as the preseason All-American teams. Certainly, up for consideration. Whether or not he can do enough this season to end up there at the end of the year is a different story. Because again, we're talking about heading into the year. Jared Wilson is taking over for Cedric Van Pran at center for the University of Georgia this year. And Coach Smart has been nothing but high on Jared Wilson and his athleticism heading into the season. He talked about it in spring practice, how he could not wait for the world to see Jared Wilson. Based on that, I can't wait for the world to see Jared Wilson. And if he is everything he's been cracked up to be, I would expect that he's probably going to show up on the Remington Award preseason watch list. The Remington is, is not one that I ran through off the top there, but that award is given to the top center in the country every season. So watch list as a first-year starter for the University of Georgia would be quite the honor for Jared Wilson, and I think it could happen. Warren Brisson was another name that came back here in 2024 for Georgia along the defensive line. I think that's big for Georgia because he provides a push and a twitch in the middle that maybe is a little bit different than what Nazir Stackhouse can provide. And Brinson is in a money year. He is trying to, to get himself positioned to make it into the NFL. And if he plays to the level he is capable, there is every reason to think that Warren Brinson could end up on an all-conference team or – on a preseason watch list for awards like Lombardi or the Outland. Um, C.J. Allen, if we move off of the defensive line and we start to move back through the defense a little bit, is a guy who really showed up last year as a freshman. We all expect him to only be better here in year two, and he should be up for the Butkus Award on a preseason watch list, as well as on the All-SEC, All-America, and Bednarik Award watch lists. His partner, Smile Munden, is another name that we're all very familiar with who should be on the preseason Buckus Award watch list, as well as the all-conference list and as an All-American. I know we lost Brock Bowers. There is no replacing Brock Bowers, but Oscar Delp is a good football player who plays tight end for the University of Georgia. And if he's not on the Mackey preseason watch list, I will be floored. 
I fully expect him to be there. I think he's also going to be a preseason all SEC guy. Um, and it's a little bit of a reach, but I do think he might get a few votes for preseason all American. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see on him as far as that one is concerned though. In the special teams game, Peyton Woodring, and I talked about this a little bit last week, Peyton Woodring uh, should be up for the Lou Groza preseason watch list this year. He should also be up as an all-SEC, all-America candidate uh, because he did absolutely nothing last year except finish by hitting 17 of his last 18 kicks uh, en route to becoming a freshman all-American. So there's every reason to believe Woodring is going to follow that up with another good year, and he is going to then be on these lists at the end of the season as well as here in the preseason. Brett Thorson, the punter for Georgia, should be on the Ray Guy preseason watch list as well as the All-SEC preseason lists and the All-American lists. The special teams units, as I talked about last week, are in good shape, and these two guys are going to have prime opportunities to show what they can do this season for the dogs. To put a bow on it all, other than the guys that we all think are going to be starters or are going to be able to play big minutes uh, for Georgia here in 2024, there's also those guys that have the potential to be splash players for the dogs this year. And four names that pop into my mind as guys that could end up on freshman All-SEC teams or freshman All-America teams when we get to the end of the season would be Ellis Robinson III for the dogs at corner because he's the kind of player that he's going to be battling for playing time throughout the season. And if he's not starting outright, it's hard for me to believe that he's not going to be on the field in certain packages or in a rotation. He's just too good. If he plays more as opposed to less, he could absolutely end up being a freshman All-American. He's that good. So it'll just be interesting to see how much he can end up getting on the field. K.J. Bolden is another guy that is going to have the opportunity to compete and earn time, and at the end of the day, could end up all-conference and all-America as a freshman as well. Justin Williams comes into Georgia as the number one linebacker recruit in the country for 2024. It's going to be a little bit harder for Justin to get every down snaps to qualify for freshman all-SEC or freshman all-America, but Justin should have every opportunity to play on special teams and get time when it's available at linebacker. So the odds are a little bit longer, but I wouldn't be shocked if Justin wound up on some of these teams at the end of the season as a freshman all-conference player. Joseph Jonah Ajanye is another guy along the defensive line that is coming into Georgia seemingly ready to go. He's a guy that has the build, has the makeup from everything we've been told to be able to contribute to Georgia right away. And if things really do break his way, absolutely, J.J.A. is a guy that I think could be a freshman all-conference player for the Dogs. That is a long list of all of the talent and all of the potential recognition that lies ahead for the Dogs here in 2024. It is more than a mouthful. There is absolutely no way around it. And it's just when you think about it as a whole— and I hope you've noticed this over the last few episodes of the podcast, the Georgia football team is absolutely positioned to have a wonderful season here in 2024. And I hope by diving into it a little bit deeper and just sort of giving you a different perspective about how to think about these players and the various ways that they might be recognized heading into the season, when these things do finally start to pop up in your news feeds, later in the fall here, over the course of the summer and then into the fall. I hope that you can think back to this and it, it sort of uh, triggers a memory for you about, oh yeah, Randy talked about this way back in June, that this was a guy that might actually have a breakout season for Georgia. And if these guys have the kinds of seasons that would allow them to stay on these lists beyond just the preseason watch lists down through the fall, that is only good things for the University of Georgia here in 2024. Another thing that's really good here in 2024 is the fact that you guys are supporting this channel with so much energy and vigor. You know that I cannot do this without you. Everything I do here is better because of you. 
but I do get to see these numbers in the background. And I notice that 71, 72% of the people who are watching these videos out there, you guys aren't actually subscribed to the channel. So if you like what we're doing, double check your subscription status and make sure that you have hit that little sub button because we would love to have you be a part of the community here and you don't want to miss all the great stuff that we have going on week over week. Something else I want to make sure that I take an opportunity to tell you about right now is something that is brand new to the channel here. I went ahead and announced this very special ladies only ask me anything. We're going to do this in the middle of July. And the reason I'm doing this is for a couple of different uh, angles. One, I think, because I know that in my personal life, when I have Georgia fans around me that are women, they bring a different perspective to what it is that I'm watching, how the game goes. Maybe I'm missing something. And I just love to have the ladies in my life watch games with me. I know that there are a lot of girlfriends, wives, mothers, daughters, sisters, friends out there who are Georgia Bulldog fans. Tell them about this event. Have them sign up for the newsletter and follow me over on Instagram. That's how you gain access to this special ladies only Ask Me Anything. The other reason I think is that sometimes ladies don't like to speak up and have their voices heard when they're in larger chat room communities for whatever reason. And we want this channel and this community to be a place where everyone is willing and excited to share their voice about the dogs. And I wanted to give the ladies an opportunity to step into this Ask Me Anything where that's what we're doing is talking about the dogs and just let their voices be heard because we're going to talk about any and everything Georgia football and anything else that any of our guests want to talk about during that uh, live stream. But that's coming up in July. It's very easy to get qualified for it. I'll be sending out a link to the event prior to it happening, obviously. And to be a part of it, just hit the email link. It's in the description below and you'll figure out how to join. I hope to see you there. Here on the channel, we're continuing our march to 10,000. We are growing by the day, and I appreciate each and every one of you being here with us. You know we can't do this without you. It makes everything better when you're here, and I just hope that if we're doing a good enough job, along with the likes, you'll give us a share occasionally and tell your friends about us so maybe they can join the party over here too because we really want to get there uh, before the end of this season. The talent on this Georgia roster for 2024 is unreal. And based on what we saw today in the world of recruiting, it's only going to continue. Along with that talented team, that talented roster, and winning results on the football field, what you see is people start to talk about your team a little bit more, and you start to get players on these award watch lists, which everybody wants to be recognized for doing a good job that means that your team is winning. That means that you are raising your own individual stock and brand when it comes to potentially advancing to the NFL. So it is good on good on good. And the more dogs that we see landing on these preseason uh, watch lists for these various awards, the better it is for everybody. And if they maintain their status on those lists and then show up there at the end as well, then you can pretty much take it to the bank that Georgia is going to be right where we all hope they are come the end of the season. So with that said, until next time, you guys take care of yourselves, take care of your friends, take care of your families, and go dogs. Tell them how about them <laughs> dogs. That's what I told them. <laughs> <laughs>